Hello everyone, this is Sage Gerard, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about mind maps. Mind maps are what you see on screen. These are just, um, I have some examples I pulled off Google Images here. They're just diagrams that go and uh, give you an overview of any knowledge domain. And in this case, we have transports, but other people will go through the trouble of making them nice and pretty for presentation's sake. Here's one on time management. And really, it's all about, um, you start from a central idea, you branch out into uh, basically just smaller uh, concepts that belong to the parent concept, and you repeat that pattern. So what's nice about mind maps is you can use them to get the uh, a sense of the shape and the uh, scope of a knowledge domain very quickly. And uh, they can get very complicate, complicated. In fact, they can get uh, as complicated as you want. And personally, I don't deal with um, you know these really uh, involved mind maps, and I don't even need to deal with a presentation of it. But there's mind map software out there that you can use. Uh, one that comes up on Google is here at um, drichard.org mind maps. And the idea is you have your central idea, then of course you can add some more nodes in order to uh, kind of branch out. And some of them let you attach files, notes, things like that. I just don't think any of this is really necessary. It's the structure of the mind map that kind of enables a lot of cool things. And um, I, can act I actually wrote a tool called IDACT, which uh, basically lets you deal with mind maps in a text form. But before I show you that, I'm actually going to install it fresh for you here in a second. I can go into my own notes here, and I have just a few um, mind maps that I wrote in text. And really all I need to do to um, show you what a mind map looks like in text is to just indent the concepts. So to say, for example, let's look at this Mongo one. So we start with Mongo as a central idea, and I indent each line more uh, depending on if it's relevant to a broader parent concept. So if you're familiar with Mongo, then you know this all, all of this should be you know, par for the course. You already know what this is. But I like having these mind maps around in the event I'm kind of new to something, and I want to get an idea of the shape and what I need to learn very quickly. And then I drill down according to what I believe I need to hit first. And that's all well and good, but I wanted to find a way to leverage the mind maps a little more in terms of web searches. So let's talk a little bit more about that. If we have this mind mapping software again, and I had the ability to kind of attach files or details to a, a specific node, then what we end up dealing with is kind of proprietary file formats. Let's uh, actually go look at this, uh, Google this again, mind map software. There's uh, one I used here called FreeMind. Uh, this, it was a pretty nice one. I enjoyed using it. And uh, let's see if they have some screenshots of the interface. Yes, they do. When I was using FreeMind, I actually have some of these mind maps still. That's a bit small. They all have very small screenshots here. Just two. There we go. That's a little bigger. So all these guys would do is you, you type this all out. You could draw lines between connections, add icons, all sorts of stuff. And some of these would even let you put in hyperlinks to go in and um, you click these and you go to a relevant web page. And that's, that's nice, but whenever you save these out, you ended up with a proprietary file format, which kind of means a uh, software lock-in. And honestly, I don't even think you need to go this far with mind maps anyway, because if you have to go this far with mind maps, you're not really using mind maps for what they're for, which is high-level overview of a knowledge domain. Okay, so let's talk about IDACT. IDACT is a tool used to facilitate access of knowledge, access to knowledge in mind maps such that you don't have to write all those little details and those GUIs yourself. Um, there is the obvious question of why don't you just Google stuff directly, and you would. And if you knew exactly what you're looking for, then IDAC doesn't really help you. But what it does do is it let you it lets you use very vague searches, too vague for Google even, when you're not sure how to navigate a knowledge domain quite yet. And it has another really cool benefit that I like. But let's uh, start start looking at these uh, notes that we could um, that are available to us. I have these GraphQL notes, for example, and you see I have some related concepts I could work with here. 
I want to learn a little bit more about the GraphQL client, for example, and you note here I have a GraphQL at the top and at the bottom line it says role of the client. That's right down here. Now the uh, role of the client part is something that's going to get attached to GraphQL because IDAC uses a very simple matching algorithm in order to make, in order to um, you know what line to uh, search for on Google and to attach it to parent concepts. So I would specify the mind map file in IDACT and then I would also specify a string to search for and then I can also specify a couple of other options but if we run this by default you'll see it finds a match and then it just searches Google for GraphQL role of the client and role of the client and it's just a concatenation of the uh, all the parent concepts leading down to that child string so this is where the whole contextualization of the search comes in and also note that uh, when I was saying using vague terms too vague for Google if I just search Google for client that doesn't really say much it doesn't really uh, put it in the context of what I'm looking for now of course uh, there's the obvious question of I can alt tab hit control L type GraphQL client in Google directly why do I need to go through all this right and um, that's a great question and you know most of the time you wouldn't especially not for these one-off cases like this you could of course do a little bit of explicit setup with an alias where if I wanted to do something like this I could go ahead and put an IDACT uh, graph I'm gonna go ahead and just make a stupid alias that'll break if I leave this directory just for the hell of it and then if I do an alias like this, I can just do that and run a search that's contextualized to GraphQL. And it's still going to be searching the mind map as the, you know, the basis for it. So if I end up doing a search for just Q, it'll match against query because query is somewhere in there. But um, basically whatever you search for, it does a case insensitive search for just what's contained in the stream. I kept this very simple and permissive. Well, I probably should say greedy with the algorithm. Uh, for implementation's sake, but then there's other options you can run. Like for example, I can go ahead and specify uh, lucky, just to use Google's I'm feeling lucky feature. And you can just end up wherever it, it puts you. But now let's go a little bit more toward uh, why this is useful. There's kind of two cases I'm thinking of here. One is I am an autodidact that wants to teach myself something, but I don't know how to drill down into something yet. So if I'm on Wikipedia and I'm just trying to learn a knowledge domain, I would at least jot down in a mind map what I could research later. And then a few weeks later down the line, I don't remember what exactly I'm looking for except some, again, vague notions. And then using this, I could go ahead and quickly pick up in some of those things that caught my interest at the time. That's one thing, but let's talk about something a little more practical in terms of collaboration. I am a developer that is maintaining a non-trivial project. Uh, in my current directory it says a big project, but um, that's, rel that's all relative I suppose. It's just a matter of it's big enough that I have a stack that involves a few you know, flavors of the month. We've got Babel, ESLint Express, uh, Just React, Redux, and Webpack, and IDACT is kind of here to um, act as a kind of source of documentation that I don't have to write myself. Typically, if ever, I, whenever I would write a project, I'd write a readme and then I'd say, oh, this is a project that uses these technologies and here's why. But rather now I can just say what we're using and then use IDACT to give them a guide and basically say, read everything that pops up and then don't come back until you're ready because then I'll know you're ready to contribute. So this right here in this script, I have a prep where I grab a mind map from a paste bin, then I send it over to IDACT. This dash means standard in, and I'm looking for a string called tutorial. So you can kind of uh, infer that this is going to bring in a mind map, their mind map, there's a bunch of lines that say tutorial, and when searched in context, it's going to bring up a tutorial for each stack software. So it's one command, then you get everything you need. So if I open up this paste bin, you can see what we have here. So 
that that's all fine. Now, if you don't want to manually maintain this, it's not too much work to uh, read these dependencies and then generate a mind map yourself because the pattern's pretty clear. And of course, you can switch up and use one of these other strains, best practices and advanced, or whatever you think is better in order to advance to the next set of content that comes up. So let's run this, npm run prep. So we're gonna find some matches and then we're gonna see whatever comes up because I have I'm feeling lucky here. Intro to React, getting started with the slint, uh, Jest, set up with Jest, uh, setting up a Babel, Express tutorial, starts on part two with this one. Then we've got a Redux and a Webpack guide. So really this is all just a whole, if somebody comes up and wants to work on this project and they want to figure out what exactly they need to know, you just say run this command and read everything. And that's it's all kind of solved by that one question. So the benefit of this is that if I, whenever I want to document my project, I don't have to talk about my vendor stack at all. All of it is covered by the mind map. It's all shared as well. So if I have several projects that uses this exact same stack, I could just fire it up that way. And then whenever it comes time for me to write something, I could, if I wish, go ahead and write another mind map for local documentation. But I think at that point, I'd probably just go for readmes. But that's kind of the other benefit with IDACT. If you don't know, well, I mean, it's really the same benefit, just a different way. The idea is you have a user who's not really familiar with the knowledge domain yet. And when you give them IDACT, it gives them everything that they need to familiarize themselves with it, and then they just keep hitting it until they can really just Google the concepts themselves. So IDACT does uh, kind of work its way out of a job quickly, because it's only useful during that first period when somebody's not familiar. And at that point, they can just Google directly whatever they're looking for without having to consult it. At any rate, that's, uh, that's IDACT and how you can kind of leverage mind maps. And again, it's not something you specifically need, but it's a nice bit of automation for bringing up some relevant content very quickly. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you happen to want to contribute, by all means, go over to the, Git, uh, the GitHub source code for IDACT and uh, open up some issues or fork it, open up some pull requests. Thank you very much and have a great day.